I finally read the New Year's letter. Well, uh, which messy. one? Read that this morning. The so. Square Enix one? Yeah. Yeah, about NFTs? I mean, it's the same as last year's. There's almost an identical letter. Yeah, it's like you like so, more NFTs. Almost identical letter. Right, like we have not changed plans, uh, it, which kind of makes sense at this which, point. Which it said like, hey, we made a long-term plan. Yeah. We are still on the same long-term plan. Right, despite the frustrations and the market up. Somebody said that the market being down was like a downside to that. And I was like, that doesn't really impact Square Enix at all. Like it's whether it's up or down, you know, like the, the, the games are going to come out and those will determine whether they're they're uh, happy with it or not. The overall like NFT value doesn't doesn't actually impact them at all. You know, like we talked about in the last uh, last video. It affects the like marketing efforts. That's right? true. Very true. Um, how do you, how do you market back, this game? Somebody else's success? Or are you trying to distance yourself from from the from the scams? Right. From from the people who've done it. How do we um, not end up on Coffeezilla? You know, <laughs> right. It's like, all right, right. we've teamed so, up with Coffeezilla as an audit check. <laughs> right. That's our marketing campaign. Effectively, if you can stay off of Coffeezilla, that's probably a success in the gaming space for NFTs at this point. I don't know that like big monetary success is really the first aim as an iteration. Mm -hmm. I think if you can just stay off Coffeezilla, let's call that a win. And then maybe we can look at a second generation where you aim for real positive focus. But I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see any way to do an NFT and not end up with Coffeezilla or Callum Upton covering you. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Callum, but he makes some brilliant stuff on Earth 2, which is an NFT project that claims to be a game mm -hmm. and then gets really mad if you say, what's the game? If you just ask what the game is, people immediately call you a hater and there's no room for discussion. Um, but there's no answer. Like, there's no answer. It's it's not a game. Um, it's just something masquerading as a game. And since it doesn't have a way of actually paying you back, it's not an investment. Right. And so if it's not an investment and it's not a game, as an NFT project, it? I just don't see how it's not theft. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like... I don't know what else to right. call it. Yeah, because you're like not. If you're marketing yourself as an investment and a game, and you are neither of those things. Play to earn, you are collecting and money. you can't earn. You're not giving anything back, right? right? You're not. You're not like a Patreon that's supporting a content creator who's making content. You're not a Patreon that's supporting an indie dev that releases a, a buggy game. Right. Like you are supporting somebody who is not giving you anything in return. Right. And they're promising everything in return. So I don't see how it's just not that. It's a scam yeah. <laughs> or uh, it's a trap. Like, and like, out. it's not yeah. vaporware where like they're setting their sights at something that's too big to do it. Like they're not saying, Hey, you know, we're aiming for something huge. So like ashes of creation is not a very good scam because he's upside down on it. So like if Steven Sharif is, is stealing, he's not very good at stealing because he's losing a lot of his own money in the process. And I do believe the game will come out. Where I believe the difference is, I believe with Ashes of Creation, he's building a game that will come out and will not meet the ridiculous expectations that people have set for it, as opposed to Earth 2 will never release and is aiming to collect way more of people's money than what anybody other than the fans have put in. But like, I don't, I, I put fans in quotes because like, I don't even know what they're a fan of. Like, it's not a game. It's not a game. And so, like, that's what Square Enix has to distance themselves from if they're yeah. going to touch NFTs, is these projects out there that are just theft. Well, and I think that's where you end up structuring it so that your game comes out and you let people play it rather than you marketing like, hey, guys, you're going to be able to X, Y and Z off the game. It's not about talk. It's about action. And it's about people going hands on. And it's ideally them building a game first, then essentially like, OK, what then can blockchain technology do? There's a game loop. I can't present this game loop in the way that is the most fun without something that allows a mm -hmm. change of ownership in these various components of the core game. Yeah. NFTs as a way of tracking ownership is a really neat solution to this game that is already an idea and would have existed without blockchain, but blockchain is actually removing some things that would be hard to do and it's giving us tools to make those stronger. Fine. But I just have yet to see anybody that builds something like that. So something like trading card games is it makes way more sense for magic the gathering to be an nft project yeah than final fantasy 14 mm -hmm. like it just makes a thousand times more sense because they are limited run items that are, scarcity is part of the core game mechanic and the act of trading is supposed to be something that takes place 
And the idea that the publisher would get some piece of the action when it's trading makes sense because they don't benefit yeah. from some Lotus card from way back in the day selling for $10,000. And to stop them from feeling like they constantly need to print new cards, it would be nice if they were getting some residual on the fact that their old content is something that is still, still supported by them continuing to maintain and do events and and plan around the rules of the game and balance the game that's all real work they do and they'd like to be paid for it so something like trading card games makes way more sense for nfts and i'm not saying oh trading card games should be nfts i'm just saying that makes more sense than a we are an online global rpg company with a bunch of rpg studios and it'd be great if stories were tradable like i don't <laughs> like i don't i don't i don't right. know how square enix does it and so like i'm willing to hear them out but Odds are it's like, well, cool. There's going to be some Square Enix games that come out that I don't play. Like I don't, because I don't see how they're for me. Yeah. And that's where it's going to all boil down to proof in the pudding uh, when it comes down to it. It's going to be an interesting year because uh, they've been talking about this a little bit. Obviously uh, the, uh, the mood and, and when it comes to these things, it's, I hope that people are skeptical. I hope that like that you, people do not go into this with this level of blind faith that Square Enix is going to do everything right for the gamer. They've got their gotcha games. They've got like, they're a business and they have a wide ranging set of properties and products and monetization strategies. So essentially, if anything else, the one thing that does give me confidence in Square Enix as a company is that they've dipped their toes into every possible thing and they've gotten real time feedback on the cost for them the, what kind of return that it is as opposed to like just going ham, but they've committed to this projects and uh, it's going to be an interesting year to see if they, because what I'm interested in is overall is because I don't believe play to earn is possible. I just don't believe that's a like viable thing that's going to appease and appeal to the mass gaming community. Do I think there'll be somebody, maybe there'll be one person that will be able to be like, yo, like I've come up with a system and I've, you know, I am earning all kinds of money and that's going to be the case because I would submit that the only way that I've seen play to earn actually work within gaming is content creation, where you essentially have a content creator who puts out content, people consume that content, content creator gets paid. And the biggest kind of kickoff was when like Ninja announced his, uh, like almost $300,000 a month for Fortnite, which then just drew in so many more people. But I would venture to question how many of those were actually ever making that level of money. So that's that's where I wonder if there's any kind of parallel to, uh, you know, what we do versus the actual NFT within the game itself. When I go look at Twitch analytics, there have been months inside the last year that we were considered in the top 1% of some of the various ways to break down the platform within like English speaking channels. Yeah. And I can tell you that $300,000 is an unfathomable amount of money. And so the idea that we are top one percenters and that that is so far beyond reach that it is ridiculous. Like I cannot even imagine that amount of money. Right. I cannot picture it. I don't even know what I would, I don't even know where I would start. The idea that that means that there are 99% somewhere below us. And I already feel like that's, and I'm not talking Per month, I'm talking annually. Three hundred thousand dollars just mm -hmm. seems preposterous. And um, didn't Happy announced how much the uh, the Black Jokobo campaign earned him? I'm not going to say the number because I believe I've heard it, but I didn't want to echo there it. There were some people that shared theirs. It was in depending on the person. All of the people that I saw share theirs publicly were in the tens of thousands. Right. I did not see anybody sharing that was not but, at least a five digit number. Yeah. A five digit number would literally change my life. Right. And to say that a five digit <laughs> number would change my life would change the course of the content I make and the way I make it. And I am considered top 1% by some standards, by any standards. The fact that I could even be okay. close to top 1% says that the gap between these people that are where you know, Ninja or Asmongold are, and it's like, oh, well, right. you know, it's some make it to that degree. Gap. No, no, nobody makes it to that degree. Right. Because that's the top 1% of the 1%. Because the Maybe. top 1% is what it takes just to make a living at this. And yeah. the difference between a living and what some are making right. is insane. So I just don't, like, I think those are more anecdotal. Well, I think the reason we really I bring that up like and play to earn, yeah. I think you need to look at more like, could somebody like pay for a PS5 eventually? eventually. Could somebody like, buy the next Pokemon like play to earn in my mind is 
can I make it a hobby? Uh, my brother goes and enters in the Warhammer tournaments and every once in a while like wins a figure or enough to buy a couple pots of paint, which are three to four dollars a piece. Like that's what play to earn means to me. Somebody's going to take it as can I make a living at this? And it's just like you're talking about being the top 0.001%. Why aim for that? Why not just say, wouldn't it be cool if the you know, the, the sandwich I got while I was at the tournament was paid for. Like that is already going to put you in rarefied air within play to earn. I just mm -hmm. don't see how it's not. Yeah. And like, so I, I see Chad actually saying that uh, happy has confirmed it. And I believe he shared that it was like, like 25 K he had the biggest month he's ever had on Twitch because of the, that, and I bring that up to illustrate the massive gap and difference between like something like final fantasy, something like an MMO content creator, and essentially the, uh, you know, when you look at like Ninja and, and the, the 1% of the 1% of the 1%, like where you're talking when, when Chris is highlighting the gap, like it's, it is, it's wild. It, it's just fascinating to see, but that's where it's, when it comes down to pay to earn, that's the, I, that's the play to earn that, that that's where it's like, you're providing a service. And then I don't see NFTs really providing that service where it's not arbitrary where it's not where it like the thing about it with us is where like it feels so you know like almost the artificial FOMO things that I I find frustrating right like I understand FOMO like hey yeah if you want to experience heaven's word when heaven's word was out like that's a natural level of FOMO you won't experience heaven's word the same way now as to when it was actually released and so that's that's just the natural you know if you're missing out that's just a natural fact of life the artificial side of it is where i end up getting frustrated where it's like we don't need to do this but we're imposing on that so that it becomes that sense of like oh i better you know like i don't i don't want to miss this thing or you know i'm only i'm gonna, I'm gonna lose out on you know x y and z and that's where we end up uh you know getting i think frustrated as gamers and that's where like i think when i hear the phrase play to earn in relation to games i go Ooh, this is going to get, this is going to get weird, you know, and we'll have to see what, what ends up happening this year, but that's a, that's a fun little mini breakout topic. Uh, are you ready to talk about some interesting fun things as opposed to, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The idea yeah. that it being a gaming content creator, somebody that makes a six figure living as a gaming content creator, even in a single year of their career is a billionaire metaphorically. Like huh? it's, it's that rare. Like, like I think oh, that, yeah, that I gotcha. it's that rare. The odds of you meeting a content creator or being a content creator that makes a, that has a six digit year is the same odds as what feels meeting like in the general population of going to the grocery store and running across a billionaire. Right. Like it's just like the people that can make a living at it are the millionaires metaphorically, metaphorically, definitely not literally <laughs> so like, like, mother of God. Yeah. So like when people say like, I just do this for the money. I made in 2022 less than a tenth of my highest earning year. So, like, just for perspective, like, why would I not go back to the career I was in before if it was all about the money? I think it was the career you were in before was killing you, though. So it's like uh, there's a there's a little bit of a trade off. Uh, your skin yeah, looks much better. I yeah. could have. I could have. I could have made half of what I was making in that job and been a lot healthier. Yeah, that's true. Uh, speaking of saying thanks, Anthony Crash with the uh, gifted sub over on Twitch. Thank you so much. Uh, and obviously, Farmer Girl, uh, I don't know if you're here hanging out today, but uh, your continual support for uh, the content yeah. uh, is uh, is what has allowed uh, you know yes. Chris to go full time in this. And so uh, we just want to say I love this, and yeah. it isn't possible without you guys. Yeah, exactly. It's incredible that I get to do this.